in this lesson, I want to start off by talking about some basic acceleration problems, and then I'm going to talk about something called the acceleration of gravity, an amazing phenomenon. But let's go ahead and take a look at this acceleration formula one more time. So we already know that in order to calculate acceleration, we need to figure out the change in velocity over the change in time. But just like velocity and speed, we can use the same formula to calculate acceleration or change in velocity or the change in time. So let's go ahead and take a look at a sample problem. Say that we started out at, I'll write all this info down, started at zero, this is supposed to be at sign, a quite beautiful at sign if you ask me, at zero meters per second. That was our starting speed, basically we started not moving at all. Simple enough. And then we decided to accelerate. So acceleration at a rate of 8 meters per second squared. So this is our acceleration right here. That's how fast we're accelerating. So we want to figure out how fast would we be going after 5 seconds. So for a time we have 5 seconds. Well, using this formula, what do we want to figure out? We want to figure out the change in velocity after five seconds. What is our velocity? So let's go ahead and plug in this baby. So acceleration, we know equals eight, and I'm going to leave out the meters per second squared in seconds for now. Eight meters per second squared. Now, the change in velocity is the thing we're trying to figure out, but what we do have is the time. So time equals five and I guess I might as well throw this in. Seconds. So in order to get the change of velocity, what we need to do is we need to times the acceleration or multiply. Whenever I say times two things together, I mean multiply. I know it, <laughs> I know it sounds kind of dumb to say I want to times eight and five, but hey, you know, just guys got to deal with it, I guess. So let's go ahead and multiply eight times five in order to figure out the change in velocity. So basically the change in velocity is equal to 40, what I say, miles per hour, or no, meters per second. So after five seconds, accelerating at this rate, at a starting point of not moving at all, after five seconds, we would be going 40 meters per second. And you could also write it like this, meters per second or meters dash second. Either way, it's up to you, take your pick. So I just wanted to show you guys that that not only can we use this formula for acceleration, but also change in velocity and change in time as well. So now I think we got basic acceleration taken care of. Now I want to talk to you guys about something called the acceleration of gravity. The phenomena of gravity, actually gravity is a still pretty big mystery to physicists and chemists and a bunch of scientists, but we have the figures that we can crunch. So we know this, whenever you have an object that falls from the sky, these are clouds right here, and this is an object, what is it? I don't know, take your pick, and it's falling from the sky. We know that it, its acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now I just didn't come up with this figure right here, a bunch of nerdy people will figure this out, that the acceleration due to the force of gravity anywhere on earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Seriously, they figured that out, not me. So basically, if we were standing on top of a building, guys, you better prepare for like the worst drawing ever. Say we were standing on top of a building, we draw a little dude, that's me, up there, hey, look at me, and we decided to drop a can of tuna off the building. Well, let's go ahead and figure out the speed of that tuna after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a bunch of seconds. So time, and we'll say that the time is seconds, and the speed, we'll just say this is in meters per second. Now, remember the information I gave you guys already. The acceleration due to gravity anywhere on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that means after one second, this can of tuna would be going 9.8 meters per second. After two seconds, the speed of this can of tuna would be going 19.6 meters per second. 
That's a pretty fast can of tuna. Now, after three f seconds, how fast would this can of tuna be going? It would be going 29.4 meters per second. And after four seconds, it would be going 39.2. And you can go on and on and on, but I don't want to waste your time. Basically, what you do is you add 9.8 to this each time. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys this graphically because it isn't exactly what you guys might expect because it's a little bit different. So at zero seconds, let's just say at zero seconds, let's just say it's right here. You are holding the can of tuna. You just dropped it immediately. Now after one second, we'll say one second, the can of tuna is right here. Now at this point in time, it's traveling at a speed of 9.8 meters per second. Now after two seconds, the can of tuna is down here. Now notice that this gap right here is a little bigger than this gap right here. And that is because it picked up speed along the way. So now it's traveling at a speed of 19.6 meters per second squared. Now after three seconds, the can of tuna would be somewhere like way down here. So even though the speed looking at the graph looks kind of constant and uh yeah, looks kind of constant. It, it it kind of isn't, and it's kind of deceiving. So I think my can of tuna is changing in, si in size a little bit, but that's all right. So after three seconds, this can of tuna would be traveling at a rate of 29.4 meters per second. So I just want to take, kind of show you guys a visual of what would be going on here. Even though the acceleration is kind of constantly moving up the distance from the person is not the same from one second to two seconds then three then three seconds it's moving further and further away and that's because like I said the speed of the tuna is increasing it starts out going really slow and then by the end of four and five seconds it's traveling at a really fast rate so it travels away from you faster so just keep that in mind and that's a difference between a constant speed and constant acceleration constant acceleration acceleration means that things are speeding up traveling away from you faster and faster so I just want you guys to soak that in for a little bit go home and uh, well you guys are probably home go get something to eat and uh, soak in this information and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a drawing class so in the next lesson hopefully I draw a little bit better so anyways, thank you guys for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.